Hello, welcome to Foundation Friday, December 15th, 2017. Steve Cypress here, winding down 10 days till Christmas. See how I did that math? And uh, nearly the end of 2017. Hopefully you've already blasted through your goals for the year, but if not, hopefully you're pushing hard to make it happen. And at the same time, you're taking some time this weekend, could be a good time to uh, really think about what you want to accomplish in 2018 and then put together a plan to make it happen. Rhino of the day, I'm sharing this, uh, oh, backwards in the phone, I should have saved this one for when I'm uh, at the laptop and the camera is forwards, but I, I bet you can read it. It's my name and it's done by a professional artist who will... Uh, who did this for me. Uh, there it is. His name is James T. You see the name down in the corner, 2014. And uh, I actually uh, was uh, alerted to who this guy is by Scott Alexander himself, author of the book Rhinoceros Success, the trilogy. Rhinoceros Success and Rhinoceros Advanced Rhinocerology and Rhinoceros Relativity. And now he has a new book called Rain or Shine that just came out, his fourth book after, I don't know, 30 years since writing the Rhino book. So there it is, Rhino of the Day. And I want to tell you a story about an experience I had yesterday. Brett Olaya is here in Lincoln. Good seeing you. Uh, and I'll attempt to get this in before the uh, sun sets and you can no longer see me. How's that? So uh, enjoying another beautiful, spectacular orange and purple sunset here in the mountains in uh, Arizona, by the way beautiful fall day. We've now gotten into the 60s and it looks like uh, it ought to kind of stay there for the winter. Beautiful weather. So anyway, uh, so people might know Morris is here. Long time. Great seeing you. And thanks for the likes. And so uh, people might know if you follow me on Facebook and you see my posts, I've been asking recently about uh, looking to make the switch away from DirecTV. Our service, uh, well I found out yesterday when I called them was 132 something a month plus tax. I guess they refuse to tell me exactly what the tax is, but I, I always know in my mind it's 140 something. I'm like 140 something a month because I see these other things out there that are a lot less. And when we moved here, uh, the only reason we got the direct TV is they have the exclusive on being able to show the all the out of town NFL football games for my formerly beloved New York Jets and my view of white Michelle's Green Bay Packers and so we got that NFL Sunday ticket and then when the NFL decided this year to mismanage itself into becoming unwatchable uh, and just nauseating to even think about I of course canceled the uh, NFL season ticket package after I think week two that was enough I mean I somehow made it through week one and before the games even started week two, I was already nauseated by the players. So, and the owners, of course, and the commissioner and the whole, the whole nine yards. So, uh, canceled that. And then I started thinking, wait a minute, the only reason we got that direct TV in the first place was that was the only way to get the NFL Sunday ticket. And we don't need to spend 140 a month anymore on the, on the direct TV. You know, we got four TVs in the house and, uh, and some kind of mobile, package where we can uh, take the TV outside and do it's wireless and that costs an extra few bucks a month or whatever and so 140 bucks with the tax. So I've been posting on the Facebook, hey, you know, what should I do? And people have been great. If any of you here have responded, that's great. Red Eli is asking 60s, yeah, like, I don't know, 65 degrees or something, beautiful weather. And so, uh, they, you know, uh, so he, I looked up this uh, Hulu thing and I made my decision like, I think that's what we'll do. Hulu's like 40 bucks a month, there's a month free trial. So here is my great plan. I'm like, I'm gonna start the Hulu while we still have the direct TV before I cancel it. And let's just see if it works. If I can, you know, I'm not a tech aficionado here. First of all, I gotta figure out how to get the Hulu onto the TV. So now I had to get, go into craziness of like, do I buy a, a an Apple TV thing or an Amazon Fire Stick or a, Roku box or a Roku stick or a who and a Han or whatever and I'm like oh my god I'm getting totally confused this is just TV for crying out loud you just want to watch a movie or something so uh, I'm like the Hulu okay 40 bucks for the Hulu one time purchase of 40 bucks a piece for these sticks for the three TVs we have one TV that automatically has the the YouTube and stuff came on it somehow and so uh, but the rest I need to put something into the flash drive or whatever and uh, and then it'll only be 40 bucks a month, and then it's going to be an extra 10 or 15 to be able to record programs because I just I don't watch commercials unless I feel like it, 
and I often feel like it. I'm, I'm a marketing guy after all, but uh, I don't want to have to watch them when I don't want to. And so I got to have the recordings, and I uh, certainly am not going to rearrange my lifestyle like I did years ago to have to run home to be there to watch something. So we need that recording thing. And then there's extra you pay to not have commercials. Okay, we'll do that. And so before you know it, and then there'll be taxes, I guess, or whatever. It'd be like 50 some a month for this thing. And the sticks are the one-time charge or whatever. But it would save us like 80, 90 bucks on the bill. So that's it. Decision made. I'm going to go do it. Let's call up DirecTV and find out when the next bill is so I know how long I have to check out this Hulu before I cancel the DirecTV. So I call them up. And a few very smart things. So here's where the tip comes in, the foundational tip. You always want to know what is the value of a customer. Talked about this in earlier Foundation Friday videos. Hey, Wally, great seeing you. And so once you know that, you know how much you will happily invest to first attract a new customer, but almost more importantly, how to retain a customer. Once you have spent that time, that money, hey, Rich, invested that time, money, energy, and expertise and everything it takes to get a new customer, well, by all means, you want to keep them. It's a heck of a lot cheaper to keep a customer than to get a new one. So you want to know what they're worth. So DirecTV, you know, they put in the satellite dish and they sent the guy out to install it and they wired the thing and, you know, put in the four TVs and the boxes or whatever. That's done. Now for them to keep me every month and get me, I was going to say send them a check, but it's automatically, they take it right out of our bank account, of course. You know, 140 bucks, 140 bucks, 140 bucks for basically nothing, for flipping a switch. You know, a tiny bit of minute, unbelievably minute amount of bandwidth that can't cost them more than tenths of pennies. And so, man, if I'm going to get 140 bucks, oh, and then they have very slight marginal cost of having to pay for certain channels that will charge them per month based on subscribe. A few more pennies there, whatever it is. They got to be running a, a huge profit to keep me. Uh, and then they're going to have a billing department, but still, still, huge profit to keep me. So uh, here's what happens. They do, first of all, the thing is, I, the customer service people that I asked, uh, I forget what I asked, but. Uh, when it came to what's, you know, I have a question about, oh, I was like, uh, you know, when is our contract? And like, oh, your particular contract, I have to direct you to a department for that. And because I told her, I want to cancel, I want to know when. Well, they got me right to the department, which I'm believing was the sales department, the can the can and the specialty cancellation, the saving customer part of the sales department. I've, I've worked in those departments before and I've set them up before. So you want to, and Brett is asking bait and switch. Um, uh, I, first of all, absolutely not. I don't even want to give you that idea. Bait and switch, by definition, is when a seller offers one thing knowing they're not really, they don't really have it in stock. Kind of like what happens on Black Friday. Only everyone knows, and they do put in the ads, only 20 available of this TV for $50 or something. Like, but if they didn't put the only 50 available, that would be, uh, likely to be seen as a bait and switch. They would say, hey, we got these TVs for 50 bucks. Everyone comes in the store, they go, oh, we only had two of them. And so the other 998 people that came in, you can't get one. That's called a bait and switch. You dangle something in front of people, but it's not really there. You pull it away so you can sell them something else. Obvious, absolutely not what happened here. This is called saving a customer. So you want to, when somebody wants to cancel, you don't want to have a customer service person just say, okay, you don't want to accept cancellations on emails or text messages or any other stupid ways people do business. You want to be in person with them if they're valuable enough. Uh, very, at the you know, second best is way down on the list is the phone and nothing else is third for anyone who's canceling. So at the very least, you get on the phone like they did and you get a specialist who's in the business of saving accounts and has a budget to do so and has scripts to do so and is given leeway to use common sense to do so. And so it was really masterfully done. So person got on and first of all, she was, you know, very personable, like really great attitude and, and very uh, understand anything I said she understood. You know, she was very agreeable. She wasn't saying, oh, you know, like, like you or I might be. I know I've done that before. You're a business owner, you can take it personally. So this is one thing the business owner yourself 
not to mention you shouldn't really be doing anything yourself in the doing of the business. But this is really something you don't want to be doing because you're going to be emotionally invested and take it personally when they cancel. Especially in my business, I'm a consultant. I'm selling myself. Someone says they want to cancel, I could see taking that personally and go, oh, what, I'm not a good consultant? I didn't, now, of course, I don't take it personally because I know I'm a good consultant, but anyway. So uh, she's like, uh, you know, what's going on? I said, well, you know, this, uh, you know, we know, I told her, you know, obviously cannot, I can't even imagine people who still can watch the NFL. I cannot. So we canceled our NFL ticket season thing, and now we, uh, I realize we don't need the direct TV, and I'm going to go with one of these much cheaper options that have them all. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Like, you know, I love my Netflix. I wouldn't be without it. And blah, blah, blah. I go, yeah, yeah, we have the Netflix, and, you know, and she's like, well, um, but also, you know, the thing is, I know what you're saying, it is expensive, but that Hulu, uh, you know, comes over, and I said, Hulu, I'm going, she's like, you know, whatever, she was, she was understanding everything I said, and relating, and saying, oh, yeah, I thought about that, too, and, you know, I tried the Hulu once, but, it, you know, sometimes I had trouble coming in, or it was spotty, or it was this, or that, or whatever, really relating to me, okay, very good, but the bottom line is, None of that would have mattered, of course, because it's like 80 bucks a month. That's $1,000 a year. I can think of something to do with 1000 bucks. Not that big a deal. I'm not going to change my life or do anything, but like 1000 bucks, I can do something with it. Heck, it's Christmas time right now. How many people would like if someone just said, here's an extra 1000 bucks, go buy some more presents for your family and friends? That'd be great. So I'll take it. And so, but then she goes, um, well, how about uh, your phone? Is your phone with AT&T? Because AT&T bought DirecTV, and she can give me $15 off a month there and free HBO or something. And I'm like, we've been with Sprint for 20 years. This phone I'm holding in my hand right now, it's a Sprint thing. You know, we just got these phones, and we're happy with Sprint, and we're on some kind of payment plan for the phones. And, like, I'm not messing with that. So forget the phone. Uh, let's just talk about, oh, I know what I asked her. I said, I want to hurt. I, somebody told me in one of these Facebook responses that, that DirecTV has a... Hulu type of service where you don't have to have the dish you can get it over the internet or something and so that's what it was so once I asked about that and the person looked it up and said what's your zip code it's not in your area and then I said well then I want to cancel that's when she got me over to the cancellation department although she didn't call it that she just said oh I I got to get you to somebody else and so uh, I'm like okay so I can't do this uh, internet thing with the direct TV so we just need to get rid of it and I guess, long story short, uh, she ended up saying, okay, so you won't do the phone thing, but I'll tell you what, I will knock $50 a month off your bill for the next 12 months. And, by the way, this is, this is I guess, a tip to anyone out there who has DirecTV or pretty much any other business that's smart enough to save customers. Again, they have a budget for these people to save the customer. And she says, I'll knock off $50 off the bill, so now our bill's going to go down to... 70 some 70 something plus tax so it'll be like 80 bucks a month or 80, 85 bucks a month or something like still not as cheap as the hulu even when you add in that you got to pay for the 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 recording ability and the no commercials and the whatever you know that would be about 50 60 maybe a month this is like 85 like for 25 bucks a month she got me. I'm like, you got me for 25 bucks a month. It is not worth it to me to be have to go out and get these sticks or whatever and figure that out for the TVs and, and switch to a whole new thing and whatever. You know, people don't like switching. We, nobody, no humans don't like change. We don't like make decisions. We don't like change. So you got to realize this. It's, it's a little bit on your side when people want to cancel. They don't really want to cancel. If you, can, if you can give them a reason to stay and overcome their complaint. So the complaint here was not with the programming or with the, uh, you know, it's working well, all that kind of stuff. It was with just the price. So she hit just on the price. And very cool. She said, oh, first of all, I love it. First of all, she said, well, your contract doesn't end until February. And so uh, I was like, oh, so if we cancel now, we have to pay some cancellation penalty or something. So you know, uh, right away I had a mental load off my mind. I don't have to do this whole Hulu thing until February. She said, but let me get to this person anyway. And she said, even though you're still going to keep it till at least February, I'll knock 50 bucks off a month for the next 12 months, and that won't extend your contract, and you can cancel any time still. And uh, that, whatever it was, it was like, won't affect anything. Just take it. I'm like, I'll take it. 
And then she said, and I'll throw in free HBO for six months, and I won't even have it automatically start billing in month seven. So it'll just roll off. In month seven, you won't even notice it was there. If you want to keep it, then you can call up. So I'm like, great, too. You know, I didn't want one of these, like, you know, we'll give it to you free, and then I, if I forget to cancel, that costs me 100 bucks or something. Like, again, not a big deal, but mentally, it's a big deal. Like, I feel stupid to have just paid 100 bucks for something that I, I didn't really want. So anyway, that's the deal. So they realize that it's worth taking a hit of $600 over the next 12 months to give us the, the $50 off in, or, in order to keep us for the, they, the, in other words, what they're saying is I'll take 85 instead of zero. Now, what do you do in your business? Because that's a decision we all need to make. And again, this is why you get a professional to do this and you don't do it yourself where you take things personally and you, and you might think wrong and go like, oh, but you know, they were paying for two years, they were paying 140 and now they're going down to 85, man, that's costing me 60 bucks. It's not costing you 60 bucks. It's keeping you the 85 and depending on the profit margin in your business, you gotta know all these numbers. That's how you can come up with the figures and make this decision. Now I could have said, well, 50 isn't enough and maybe it would have gone more. So maybe if you, any of you watch and try it, hey, Darren's here, good seeing you. Then you try it and try it with a different number. I could have done that. Uh, but I, you know, again, it's 25 bucks a month difference. Uh, it was enough to make it simple. And then I went downstairs. I told my beautiful wife, Michelle, I said, guess what, honey? You know, we have free HBO. And uh, they knocked money off the bill. And so we're keeping it. She had a huger sigh of relief than me because she, I'm sure, knows that it's painful for her to watch me try and fix anything around the house or get anything going. And it's going to mess up. And then things aren't going to happen. I'm sure she knew that. And she was like, oh, good. We're just staying with it. Because technically, the $1,000 a year is not that big a deal. I, I, I'll bet for the 1000 a year, she probably came real close to saying, why are you messing around with this Hulu thing, whatever, anyway? It's 1000 bucks. Cut it out. But uh, th that's another lesson, by the way. We can talk about some other time. But it's not just the dollars that matter. When you're talking money with people, a lot of time it goes much deeper than that to, to the emotional feeling of I don't want to feel stupid. And I don't want to throw money away stupidly. So even though it's only 1000 bucks for the year, I don't want to feel like a fool. And so that's where that comes in. I want to get the best deal. I don't want to be taken advantage of. Those kind of emotional feelings, more important than the dollars and cents. But that's really the foundational tip is know what your customer is worth and then know what you're happily willing to pay to keep them. In this case, they're, they're cutting off $50 a month off of my bill to keep me. Now, I did ask, I said like, well, after the 12 months, um, I hope they have another good promotion next year which I'm pretty sure they will, don't you? And maybe I'll check back a year from now and I'll let you know, or a year from, yeah, a year whenever it runs out. Um, and sh but she did say, oh, I'm sure they will. They always have great promotions. Because of course they will. Can you imagine if after 12 months my bill suddenly nearly doubles? It goes back from 80-some to 140? Like, there's no way they could allow that to happen. So they have kept the customer even at the discounted rate, they've done the math and they've decided that, that they can still make a profit and they'd rather make a profit and keep a customer than to lose a customer. Second of all, they can get referrals. People come over our house and watch on TV and go like, oh, direct TV, do you like it? Yeah, we like it. Well, okay. In fact, we did refer somebody. I remember we referred somebody once and we got $10 off our bill for five months or something to get 50 bucks or whatever well, for, for a year maybe it was whatever again it wasn't the 10 bucks or the 100 bucks it was we referred somebody to it so anyway that's it and I can see uh, that as the light is disappearing and you can't see me anymore if there's any questions comments concerns do you do this in your business do you you know do you regret having not done it in your business you want to keep a customer and so we I don't have any kids, but it's probably just like kids. You know, you love them all, but you still have a favorite. Like, you'll, you you got to treat them all different. And I do this from coaching, coaching sports teams. Like, you don't treat every player the same. You know, sometimes customers or players or kids must complain, like, oh, you like them more than me, or he's getting a better deal than me, or whatever. Sure, everyone can get a different deal because everyone's going to get the deal that makes them happy to keep them as a customer. All kinds of good things happen when you keep customers. So sometimes, yeah, you take a little bit of hit off of the profit 
you want to make or that you have been making or that you could make in order to keep the customer. That's the most important thing. I see some questions here. Brett Elias says, treat those as they need to be treated. Okay, I, that is true. Wally Marshall says, looks like you're in Arizona. Yes, Wally, two years ago and about three weeks, we moved from Chicagoland to here in beautiful Arizona and never looked back. Uh, no, do not do that. Uh, trying to scroll through these. Ace is here. Good seeing you, Ace. And Ace says, is the customer king? That's a great question. I will answer that on another tip another day. Uh, I will tell you that the answer is absolutely no. The customer is not king. Uh, but I will answer that in the future. But it's good to keep customers. If the choice is between keeping a customer and losing a customer, you want to do the math and figure out what you need to do to keep the customer where the customer's happy and you're happy. That's the lesson for Van Action Friday. The customer is absolutely not king, but if you can keep them happy and keep you happy at the same time, that's a good thing. Being rigid and saying, well, that's the deal. They could have said, yep, it's 140 bucks. It sure is. More than double anything else that's out there. And so, uh, sorry to see you go. Bye bye. Like, wow, I wouldn't want to own DirecTV stock or AT&T or whatever it is over the next few years because I have a feeling that uh, it's going to be happening more and more, especially the young kids. They don't even watch TVs anymore. And uh, Ace says, I know, the, <laughs> I know the answer. Very good. And, uh, and whether you know the answer or not, I will uh, be back in a future episode to discuss Is the Customer King? And so uh, that'll do it. For Foundation Friday, as the sun sets in the west, which, by the way, is over this side of the home, but since the mountains are there, we can't see the sun setting, so over here we see the purple and orange haze and the uh, light going away. And pretty soon, are we still having that big, fantastic, beautiful moon that looks like it's like right in our front yard? Uh, I do know we're having the meteor showers. Those are about to come on, and Christmas lights are starting to come on in the neighborhood and around, so very cool. First time I've recorded a video at dusk. So there's a neighbor there where the Christmas lights are coming on, and that will signal that it's time for me to take off because pretty soon you can't see me at all. And he says, perfect vantage point to shoot quail. Uh, that I wouldn't know. But I absolutely will take your word for it. Ace is a uh, hunter extraordinaire. And so, uh, but I would think that uh, to you, anywhere where there are quail is the perfect vantage point to shoot quail. But I guess what you're saying is somehow I'm up on a perch up in the air because I do see them running around like crazy around here. And they always run around in threes, by the way, except that we had in the back corner behind our pool, we had a... Uh, they, uh, I guess a mother and father quail built a nest last year, and they had like 10 babies. And those things were teeny, fuzzy, waddling around babies and, and they, until they could fly. And then we didn't see them. And Michelle's like, hey, we don't see those quails anymore. I'm like, they grew up, but whatever. Maybe they'll be back next spring to have more babies. And then Ace can come over and stand up here and shoot them. And that'll be a fun video, wouldn't it? All right, that's it for Foundation Friday. I will be back tomorrow with Success Story Saturday. Signing off from beautiful Arizona. Wish you were here, and I hope you'll be with me again tomorrow. Thanks, everyone, for being live, and thanks for all those likes. Catch you tomorrow on Success Story Saturday. Bye-bye.